What decision by a company received the most amount of backlash from the public? One of the worst most recent decisions was by Delta Airlines to completely revamp the way customers earn status. Traditionally, the more you fly with an airline, the more perks you get, like the express line at the counter, a better phone number to call for assistance, and the much coveted first class upgrade. Well, about a month ago Delta changed all that to earning status and perks based on how much you spend. Not how much you fly, now at first glance that seems reasonable. But the thing is, people who spend a lot don't need the perks, they're buying first class tickets with all the perks. Bundled in. They're not really looking to gain status with a particular airline. Because if you're spending $3,000 on a flight, that airline will take care of you regardless. It's the person who is doing multiple flights a month that you need to court. They're willing to take a longer, more expensive, or indirect flight to gain and use the perks. If you make status impossible to get, they will go elsewhere. There's a funny thing about today's airlines. They're really banks that hold a private currency more than they are a transportation business. They make more money off of frequent flyer mile partnerships with credit cards and other external businesses than they do flying planes. So Delta CEO announces back in September that they have too many people who are too loyal to their business. Imagine that. People are going out of their way to pay more or accept less convenient service so that they can use your product exclusively. And Delta says, now, we don't need you. They introduced the new status plan, which makes it impossible for anyone but people who buy first class tickets to be anything but the lowest tier. Their goal was to actively chase their customers away. The backlash was swift and severe. People canceled their Delta MX cards and mass in part because they changed lounge access rules. At the same time, over 1% of the US GDP flows through Delta branded credit cards. Remember what I said about airlines real business being banks? Yeah, well it put them in the butt. After a couple of weeks they said, we screwed up, but they didn't have a replacement plan. Last week they announced the revisions to the new plan. And the status levels are much more achievable for their customer base. It remains to be seen how damaging long term this will be, though. There's been a lot just in this year alone. Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro, we're going to take a cut of all your homebrew content income for D&D. &D. And you have to sign a contract with us in order to do it. OBTW, you have less than two weeks to sign this and we're revoking the old irrevocable license while also lowering the quality of our releases. Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro again. Someone accidentally received some MTG cards early and didn't realize they weren't supposed to have them early cause the retailer made a mistake. Instead of calling this person and explaining what happened, let's send the fucking Pinkertons to harass, intimidate, and threaten this person with jail time while taking the cards. Unity, we're going to introduce a no fee per install of games made with Unity. No, this won't take into account malicious installing, doesn't protect devs from malicious installs, and also won't take into account pirated copies. Devs gotta pay for it. What do you mean you're all switching engines? Twitch, anyone who streams on Twitch can only stream on Twitch. They can't multi-stream on other platforms at the same time like YouTube, Kick, etc. And if you try, you'll be fine. You also can't show sponsors unless they've been pre-approved by Twitch, which will basically kill off any low view or new streamers changes. That last one my memory is a bit hazy on so take it with a grain of salt. The most backlash in proportion to its customer base was probably Oglepocalypse. The incident of Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro attempting to rescind the open game license OGL that Dungeons & Dragons is printed under. The OGL has been around since the year 2000 and has allowed other publishers to use the D&D &D rules set then known as the D20 system and publish their own games, settings, and supplements using the rules made public in the system's reference document SRD. It resulted in a surge of RPG companies springing up and a huge glut of the market with RPGs that all used more were less the same rule set. 
and when Wizards of the Coast Wath went to 4th edition. Companies who had been using the 3rd edition SRD could continue to do so, and one company, named Pezo, created the Pathfinder RPG that was basically a D and D clone with some changes. Lots of people who were still using the 3rd edition rules 3.5 by that time switched to Pathfinder, and Pathfinder continued to grow until at one point it was outselling D and D 4th edition. The license to use the 4th edition rules was much more restrictive and few companies were using it. The OGL was seeing wider use even from game publishers not making products for D and D. It was basically a publisher's invitation to the community to expand their game. When Watt released 5th edition D&D, &D, they released it under the UGL and released an SRD for 5th edition rules. D&D &D surged in popularity, boosted by the rise of streaming games, predominantly critical role. A long-running game made up of professional voice actors, dozens, perhaps hundreds of independent publishers started making materials for 5th edition D&D. &D. Some of the bigger indie publishers, such as Kobold Press, became almost entirely 5th edition gaming publishers. Wizards was soaring on the popularity of D&D, &D, and lots of people were sailing along in their wake. Then internal documents were leaked, revealing Watt's plans to revoke the, the DL and release a new much more restrictive ogle, which would shackle the indie publishing world. It would, in essence, give partial ownership of any intellectual property created for D&D &D to WTC. For the large companies, they would owe a portion of their revenue to Watt for using the new license. No new material would be allowed under the old ogle. The new license threatened the existence of all the independent publishers and the ability for the community to support the game. They also had plans to restrict the features of virtual tabletops supporting their game because they had plans to make their own VTT. What happened next was an utter revolt from the community. D&D &D Beyond, the online platform for D&D, &D, saw a huge drop in subscriptions. The company released apology after apology explaining they weren't trying to take people's work away from them, but not really backtracking on the plans. They pretended it was an open discussion while committing gaffe after gaffe in their public memos. The controversy was so explosive it leaked out of the fandom into mainstream news. People who had never played D&D &D were hearing what the D&D &D company was trying to do. And eventually they caved. Wizards released the 5th edition SRD on Creative Commons, which no one entity owns and can't be rescinded by any power. They also backed off the VTT plans. They're still making their own, but I think now they're hoping to become the platform of choice by making a decent VTT instead of banning other VTTs. They can, of course, choose not to release their next version under the GL, but that wasn't the issue. The issue was the threat to existing users of the OGL and the attempt to prevent further materials from using it. What they do with their IP in the future is their business. Threatening other people's livelihoods is not. Was there lasting harm? I suspect so. Watt doesn't release their exact numbers, but I'm sure some people just soured on D&D. &D. If not the hobby entirely, some portion of those stopped subscriptions were surely never renewed. I also think the growth of the hobby is flattening off as a course of market fatigue. So it was a bad time to start alienating some of your customer base. Maybe they'll think about how limiting the license on 4E helped Pezo grow and keep the next license as open as the current one.